Hey y'all, just want to share something with you. Um, historically, it's been kind of tough to find information on the internet about being an instrumentation and electrical technician, mostly because, you know, it's not really an established career path. A lot of companies call it a different thing. But now I've noticed when you Google it, instrumentation, electrical technician salary, that Google has this new feature where they go through AI and they kind of scour the web for the results and they give you a direct answer. And back in the day when I was researching this career, and even recently when I was looking stuff up to make a video, as recent as like a year ago, actually, I believe I have a video where I look it up and I didn't even find instrumentation electrical technician and I you know, cited a website that was something about like electronics technologist or something like that. Anyways, with this new Google AI app, it scours the internet for the information that you're looking for and it gives you a straightforward answer. And now I finally see some good strong data that's easy to find about being an instrumentation electrical technician. This could be for a couple different reasons. I would assume one of them it's becoming a more established career as automation takes over we're all seeing it all of us factory workers see the change you see the number of operators dropping and the number of maintenance technicians and you know instrumentation and electrical technicians increasing or at least the open jobs are increasing not always the actual positions so without further ado i want to share the information that i found on google with you guys once again i uh, Google instrumentation electrical technician salary and my AI overview says this the salary range from instrumentation and electrical technician in the United States is generally between 64,000 and 90,000 with an average salary of 78,000 click show more it says top earners are 104,000 average 78,000. Um, I think that sounds pretty close to being right. You know, you always got to consider that different areas have different sorts of pay. I mean, Ohio, which is like a pretty low wage area. I think those numbers represent what we have going on pretty well. I would agree the top earners are, their base is around 100,000. People just starting out are in the 60s or 70s i agree with that i would say the average is a little more than 78,000, maybe maybe about 80 or 85 so i totally agree with that and remember this is a two-year degree and also remember that instrumentation and electrical technicians get paid by the hour so that's if you work 40 hours a week which most of us most of us don't so for example let's say you're a full-blown savage and your base salary is 100,000, and you work, in order to double your salary with time and a half, you would have to do 60% of 40 would be 24. So let's say you're a full-blown savage, you work 64 hours a week, you would make 200,000 if you were in that top earner category. And believe me, there are a lot of people who do that, and that option is open to you guys if you want. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. There's some good data out there. That's the pay, it's an associate's degree job. I believe the um, average pay is well beyond the average pay with a bachelor's degree. Matter of fact, I can Google that right now. Okay, so if we look at the pay of an associate's level instrumentation and electrical technician, and we compare it to the average pay of someone with a bachelor's degree in the United States, Thanks to this Google AI, it tells us right here. In the United States, the average salary for a bachelor's degree holder is 67,000 per year. So the low end or the, you know, the first time the just foot in the door instrumentation electrical technicians who generally have an associate's degree, those people are coming in at about 67,000 per year. And again, most people are working a little bit of overtime. So most of us make I would say anywhere between like a hundred and like with overtime, I would say realistically where most of us are somewhere between 80,000 and 130,000. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about pay for an instrumentation electrical technician. It does pay more than a bachelor's degree. 
Let's take that a step further and compare it to someone with a master's degree. According to Google AI, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median weekly salary for someone with a master's degree in the United States is about $1,574, which is about $81,800 per year. So the average salary for an associate's degree instrumentation and electrical technician is $78, master's degree $81. There you have it. Um, it is a high paying career. I would highly suggest doing it if you're thinking about it. Most people have no idea what it means. Um, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. The jobs are out there and they are not getting filled. And I am definitely seeing a change in wages over the past few years. I can touch on that briefly. When I moved to Ohio, I should say when I moved back to Ohio, I grew up in Ohio, moved down to Florida, got my associate's degree in Florida. I started working as a full-time tech in Florida. Um, 2016, I think I started, maybe 2017. And then I moved back to Ohio in 2020. And when, my, when I moved back to Ohio in 2020, uh, instrumentation and electrical techs were paying, I would say, on average, 28 to 32 an hour four years ago. And I would say what I'm seeing now is, let's say, 36 to 44 per hour. So I don't know what that increase is. Maybe I'll write it on the screen, but I've definitely seen an increase. And, um, you know, I've made vid videos about this career path pretty much ever since I started. There's not a lot of information about it online. It's very popular in India for some reason, but people in the United States don't really know much about it. It's an interesting career that pays very well. And there's definitely more demand than there is um, people going into the degree. And back in the day, I always said that uh, wages were going to shoot up and they, they have. I mean, tw 28 on the low end when I moved up. And now it's like 36 on the low end and the high end was like 32 or maybe 34. And now it's like 44, you know, that's just in four years. Um, the job I work at, and it's, it's not just, you know, your 40 hours and then time I have for overtime. A lot of companies have like crazy bonuses, attendance bonuses. Um, I know Lincoln Electric, that's a popular company up here. They do like a 30 to 50% bonus each year based off you know, your performance and attendance are some crazy, there's some crazy matrix they use. Um, my company doesn't do that. We get like a two to 10% bonus depending on the company performance. But what we do that get that is kind of nice is on Sundays we get double time. So if you make like 40 bucks an hour, if you work on Saturday, you get 60 and on Sunday you get 80. We also get optional overtime that's essentially unlimited. So I work with some guys that are working, you know, crazy hours and they're making crazy money you know so yeah the jobs are out there usually the ones that are dirtier and less fun are higher paying if you live in an area where there's a lot of like oil refineries and a lot of like heavy industrial stuff going on usually they look for like really good people in those areas where there's a lot of like big industry um and those are the jobs that pay more. Like I don't live in a high paying area for this type of work. There's areas that pay a lot better than where I'm at. Obviously, if you, if you live in somewhere with a higher cost of living, you're gonna make more money. So if you're in California or you know New England, you're gonna make more money than you would make in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, yeah, I just wanna share that with you guys. Always remember when you're looking at a degree program, talk to the people in the degree program, meaning the professors. You don't wanna to talk to the advisors that work for the whole school. Talk to people who work in your specific degree program and kind of pick their brains, see if they can help you get a foot in the door with your first job, because that's the only challenging part is getting your first job with education and no experience. It takes a little bit of uh, elbow grease to get in the door. So always look into that and um, yeah, that's all I got on this topic, man. I just want to keep you all updated on the topic, keep my channel going. Um, I'm monetized, get paid by YouTube now, but uh, you know, my pay is not going up because I'm not making that many videos. Um, I'm also an Amazon affiliate. Click on one of my, click on one of my links. And if you buy stuff after you click on my link, I'll get like a small commission for it and they won't change your price. I'd appreciate that. That's how you can support the channel. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.